Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer in pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is blood groups. This video will contain introduction to blood groups followed by brief discussion about the various blood group systems the ABO blood groups, antibodies to red blood cell antigens, and we will finish our discussion by talking briefly about the rhesus blood groups. Now, upcoming videos of this series will include hemolytic disease of the newborn, blood typing procedure, and blood transfusion. So, you can think of today's video as an introductory video to blood groups and blood transfusion that will help us in understanding the upcoming videos. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. So first we will talk about introduction to blood groups. Now always remember, bloods of different people have different antigenic and immune properties. In your textbook, you will see that at least 30 commonly occurring antigens and hundreds of other rare antigens are discovered on the surfaces of cell membranes of human blood cells. For example, here I am showing you an image of red blood cell and if you look carefully, on the membrane of this red blood cell, we can see some antigens. These antigens can determine the compatibility of the blood during blood transfusion. So how can we define blood groups? Any of the various types of human blood whose antigen characteristics determine compatibility in transfusion is defined as a blood group. Okay, so any of the various types of human blood whose antigen characteristics can determine compatibility in transfusion can be defined as blood group. The best known blood groups are those of the ABO system and rhesus system. Now let's talk about the history of blood groups. The main thing that you have to remember for your examination is that in 1901, Austrian biologist and physician Karl Landsteiner discovered blood groups and paved the way for blood transfusion to be carried out safely. Now, before discovering blood group, people tried to transfuse blood the scientists tried to transfuse blood and they had seen that in some cases the blood transfusion was successful however in other cases the blood transfusion had severe even fatal consequences so when the austrian biologist and physician karl landsteiner discovered blood groups that had a huge impact because for that discovery we can now transfuse blood safely. For his work, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1930. So, now that we have talked about some introductory points regarding blood groups, now we will move on and talk briefly about the various blood group systems. So, as you can see in the screen, I am showing you various blood group systems. However, always remember that there are many more blood grouping systems besides these. And the clinically important blood group systems are the ABO blood group system and also the RH blood group system. Now, before moving on to ABO blood group system, I would like to mention one important information that in all the blood group systems, the gene is usually in the 
autism. But the exception is this XG group that you can see in the left bottom corner. In the XG blood group system, the gene is in fact in X chromosome. So always keep that thing in your mind. So now let's talk about the ABO blood group system. In ABO blood group system, bloods of donor and recipient are classified into four types depending on the presence or absence of two antigens A and B on the surface of red blood cell membrane. Now always remember these antigens are also called agglutinogens because they often cause blood cell agglutination as we will later see. The development of these antigens are genetically controlled. These antigens appear in early fetal life and once they have appeared, they remain unchanged until death. Now, this is a very high yield table for your examination. You can see that in this table, we can see the classification of ABO blood group system. They are classified according to presence or absence of A and B antigens on the membrane of red blood cell. So in the blood type A, we can see that the red blood cell membrane will contain antigen A and in the plasma of that individual, there will be anti-B. Now what is happening in blood type B? We can see that the antigen on the red blood cell membrane is B and in the plasma of that individual there will be antibody anti-A. Now you may be asking me Dr. Robule, where did this anti-A or this anti-B antibody came from? We will talk about that shortly afterwards and that's a very interesting question. So moving on to the blood type AB you can see that here both A and B antigen are present on the surface of red blood cell membrane and there is no anti-A and no anti-B antibody on the plasma of this individual. Moving on to the blood type O, we can see that here there is neither A nor B antigen on the red blood cell membrane of these individuals, but the plasma will contain both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. The protein that defines the ABO antigen is a glycosyl transferase. It is encoded from a single gene for which there are three major alleles. Now you may be asking me Dr. Robiul, what do we mean by alleles? Now always remember these are different forms of the same gene. Three alleles IA, IB and IO determine the ABO blood types. Typically we call these alleles A, B or O. However, geneticists often represent alleles as variation of same symbol. Always remember the ABO gene is located at chromosome number 9. Now let's look at this table one more time but this time we will focus on the genotypes. As you can see in individuals with type A blood group the genotype may be either AA or OA. Similarly in individuals with type B blood group the genotype can be either BB or OB. In individuals with AB blood group there is only one genotype and that is AB. Similarly in individuals with O blood group there is also only one genotype and that is OO. From this table we can see that the O allele is recessive to both A and B alleles and A and B alleles 
show codominance. This is a very high yield topic to remember that A and B alleles show codominance. For example, if we look at the genotype of AB blood group, we can see that the genotype is AB. That means here both A and B alleles are seen and both of them are expressed. That's why it is called codominance. So we have already talked about this slide. A person with genotype OO produces no agglutinogen and that's why the blood type is O. A person with genotype OA or AA produces type A agglutinogen and the blood type is A. Similarly, a person with genotype OB or BB produces type B agglutinogen and has blood type B and genotype AB gives type AB blood group. Now, when type A agglutinogen is not present in a person's red blood cell, antibodies known as anti-A agglutinins develop in the plasma. Similarly, when type B agglutinogen is not present in a person's red blood cells, antibodies known as anti-B agglutinins develop in the plasma. Now, you may be asking me, Dr. Robiul, what is the origin of these agglutinins in the plasma? Now, these agglutinins are gamma globulins. Most of them are immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin G. And regarding their origin, always remember small amounts of type A and type B antigens enter our body through food with bacteria and in other ways. These substances initiate the development of anti-A and anti-B agglutinins. Neonates have few, if any, agglutinins. Agglutinin formation occurs almost entirely after birth. Regarding the titer of these agglutinins, always remember that the quantity of agglutinins in the plasma is almost zero immediately after birth. An infant begins to produce agglutinins two to eight months after birth. The maximum titer is usually reached at eight to ten years of age and then the titer gradually declines throughout the remaining years of life. So now we will talk about antibodies to red cell antigen. We can classify them in two groups. They are naturally occurring antibodies and immune or acquired antibodies. Naturally occurring antibodies occur without any obvious antigenic stimulation in the serum of individuals lacking the corresponding red cell antigens. On the other hand, immune or acquired antibodies are produced as a result of red cell antigen which is not present on an individual's own red blood cell. So immune or acquired antibodies may develop following blood transfusion as a result of pregnancy or after injection of substances that are closely related to red cell antigen, for example after injection with tetanus toxoid. Now always remember both naturally occurring and immune antibodies may or may not bind complement. All the main blood group antibodies bind complement with the exception of Rh and Mn antibodies. Naturally occurring antibodies are wholly or partially immunoglobulin M and they react with antigen at temperature below 37 degrees Celsius. Immune antibodies react best at 37 degrees Celsius and may be either immunoglobulin G or immunoglobulin M type. So now that we have talked about the ABO blood group system, now we will move on and talk about the RH blood group system. Now what are the differences between ABO blood group system and RH blood group system? As you can see, in ABO blood group system, the antibodies develop spontaneously. In RH blood group system, 
spontaneous development of antibodies almost never occur. Again, ABO antigens are detected in tissues other than red cells. However, antigens of the RH system has not been detected in tissues other than red blood cells. Now, where did this name came from, RH blood group system? It is named RH blood group system because this type of blood was first studied using the blood of Rhesus monkey. It is a system composed primarily of C, D and E antigens, although it actually contains many more. D is the most antigenic component. The term RH positive means that the individual has agglutinogen D. The RH negative individual has no D antigen and forms the anti-D agglutinin when injected with agglutinogen D positive cells. The RH blood group locus is composed of two related structural genes RHD and RHCE. The RH gene may be either present or absent giving the RHD positive or RHD negative phenotype respectively. Alternative RNA splicing from the RHCE gene produces two proteins which encode the C or C and the E or E antigens. So this concludes our first video about blood groups and blood transfusion. Upcoming videos will contain hemolytic disease of the newborn, blood typing procedure and blood transfusion. I hope this video was helpful. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.